The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing ascender of the soul and the spirit of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show yourselves approved unto God a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, uh, we are in Roman numeral 17. You'd think we'd get past that, wouldn't you? But we're there, uh, so turn there and uh, check yourself. See if you're under the filling ministry of God the Holy Spirit and ready to uh, separate your thinking from everything but the information communicated to you. And do not be a source of distraction to others around you, including me. I'll overcome it. I've looked at a lot of different faces in my lifetime. Uh, and I, it's the way it goes, isn't it? That's my test. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, since man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth from you, we have assembled ourselves together so that we can study the topic or topics at hand and be informed with regard to this wonderful and perfect plan that we as believers in Jesus Christ are a part of. Bless our time together in Christ's name, amen. We're dealing with the events for the church from the rapture forward, the judgment seat of Christ, the opening and, our, and, and where we get our rewards, uh, the opening of the seven seal judgments, which takes us through the tribulation, the marriage of Christ to the church in the third heaven, uh, as the final event before the groom takes the bride to his home. <laughs> He's in his father's house and he goes to his home which is the thousand year reign of Christ. And the, and the thousand years will be an extended marriage supper, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And uh, so we looked at that. Uh, when the thousand years are over, exactly 10 centuries are completed, the thousand years, everything from the rapture to the great white throne judgment and getting, getting it out of the way, so to speak. All that is called the day of the Lord. And then the eternal state in the new earth is the day of God. Those are just titles for the, for the, for the breakdown. The kingdom of God is in two parts. One, well, unless you think thousand years is a short time, but it is something you can wrap your head around anyway. Um, we are almost 2,000 years into the church age. From uh, 33 to now, you can do the math. Uh, we're, we're pushing 2,000, uh, 1,980 something or whatever. Uh, uh, so the 1,000 years, 10 centuries, uh, in which the human race will prosper physically as never before because there will not be any of these awful things going on or allowed to go on that are a part of the rule of Satan over humanity. All, all this bad, no, people will still have regular bodies with sin natures, but they will not come <coughs> under any kind of demonic or satanic propaganda in the name of religion, politics, science, any of it. It'll all be the knowledge of God will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, the divine viewpoint of things. The human race will start off with a very few people. Obviously, the only ones that survive the trib is believers, Jews and Gentiles. The judgment, of, uh, the judgment there at the second advent of the survivors of the tribulation uh, on Christ left the goats, their unbelievers. 
They went, amazingly, they went through the entire tribulation and didn't believe in Jesus Christ, even though a lot of them knew he was coming. It's just like I've told you before, the people at the first advent knew who he was, specifically the top brass, the leaders. They examined him, they knew they could find nothing to, de, to, to, to say he wasn't qualified to be the Messiah. And yet they wouldn't embrace him. Uh, this is utter insanity. When the truth stacks up against a person and they will not conform themselves to it, uh, 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 psychology calls it motivational viscosity. Motivational viscosity is that the unwillingness to change one's mind on a topic when the evidence stacks up against them. It's gross dishonesty and it harms the individual. So those who come out of the tribulation as unsaved, they will be taken out. And only what we'll have left is believing Gentiles from the nations because after the tribulation, people are scattered everywhere, naturally. And God will send out angels to retrieve everybody and give them an airlift to Israel. And I don't know many, how many hundred thousands this will, this will involve, it's hard to say. But I have a verse which says, I'm gonna make mankind as scarce as the gold of Ophir. It must have been a strain of gold that there wasn't a lot of it or that it has been, you know, taken. Anyway, uh, the opposite always happens to the believer. Jesus turns to the believers and say, says, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Go out and enjoy yourselves. And they will, and they will spread out in little groups and start up these nations again from scratch. All the capital cities will have been laid waste. Every last capital city on earth will be leveled by an earthquake. This is, this is none of this is child's play. I like to sit around and, and think about it when, I have, uh, uh, when I'm by myself, a glass of wine. I like to sit and think about this. I like to meditate on this and reflect on the particulars. So that the, the, the uh, uh, <clears throat> millennium will be ruled by Jesus Christ, recognizing that Satan knows this. He knows it full well. And that's why, he, that's why he's doing everything to try to put his person in the driver's seat and and sell him as the Messiah, the Antichrist. Because God is going to have Jesus rule from Jerusalem over the nations. And of course, in a, in a thousand years without the death toll from what's going on today and been going on, war, killing, they won't be allowed to do that. There will be no crime families. There'll be individual criminals and they'll be nabbed real quick. They'll never be able to organize anything into a mafioso. There will be, there will be true free enterprise, not monopolistic enterprise. That's the distortion of capitalism is the monopolistic version where certain people are given certain privileges and exempt. It, in other words, it's not a level playing field. We haven't had this in this country for a long time. And that's the root of it all. Our leaders, our lawmakers, these people didn't shut this down. Oh, we went through antitrust stuff and everything. They just, they just changed, they got a bunch of lawyers, changed it and put it all out here under different headings. So anyway, you won't have that. You'll have honest money. 
You won't have any of this corruption that is so rampant today. Not at all. It won't be allowed. No one will be able to promote these things that are so disgusting and anti-biblical. They won't be allowed to do it. People who commit high crimes will be executed, even if they're a believer. It's called the rule of the rod of iron for a reason. The natural world of plants and animals and whatever will be completely fixed up. It, it kind of looks to me like it's going to be pre-fall of Adam situation with the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. No dangerous animals at all. At how The particulars, we have to wait till we get there and then, oh, we'll understand it then perfectly. But if a lion's not dangerous and a bear's not dangerous and a cobra's not dangerous, then that means all the rest of them are, aren't, aren't either. That's in the prophets. The prophets reveal this, the day of the Lord. Uh, yes, people come under divine discipline. Nations that do not send a delegation on the Feast of Tabernacles, just, just a token tele, uh, a group there to honor because Tabernacles is about the millennium, the forward look, and everything wonderful that's happening in their lives physically. And if they don't, then they don't get rain for a while. Speaking of rain, I just read the one, Yemen, it's a desert country. In one day, in a, in a matter of hours, it got at least 25 inches of rain. I've never heard of one like that. <clears throat> I saw the water that was out in the Death Valley that got into the Death Valley. That, that, there's a verse in the Old Testament. He's going to make the desert bloom like crazy. You know, all those deserts need his water. There's little seeds laying out there just waiting. Just waiting for the water. For centuries. And out in Death Valley, they say, I haven't seen all this stuff sprouting up all over the place. It won't last because they don't, won't have continual cycles of rain. But there'll be no deserts. There'll be no mountains. As far as I can tell, there won't be any terra firma ground that is not useful and beneficial to humans to produce crops and whatever else. So that's the thousand years reign of Christ, and you're supposed to be praying for that. In the Lord's Prayer, well, it's, that's technically wrong. It's the model prayer. They call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's the model prayer. The Lord's Prayer is in John, what, 17. That's the Lord's Prayer, a big, long one. The model prayer is, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So after the, after the thousand years are wrapped up, we will have the Gog and Magog event, another mind-boggling event. Uh, to even contemplate, looking ahead, that so many people that come into existence during the thousand years will remain in unbelief. With Christ and us ruling on the earth and all the good things and all the evidence so what so 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 are we surprised today? Are we surprised today when you see so much negative volition in the world? Unbelievers and then believers that are not interested? And of course we live in America, so we get to see what they're all wrapped up in. What's important to them? It's the physical side of life. Entertainment, food programs all over the place, and who doesn't like food? Material things, constantly. 
and they'll sacrifice to get these things and, 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 and pursue these things. I've seen congregation members go down over some activity that they deem so much fun and importance, and the activity in and of itself isn't, isn't evil. It's just it, the parable of the sower. It's the weeds that take over in their garden. And the divine good and their attendance and other things start being affected. Now, that's not the only reason people uh, implode spiritually. But it's one of the, re the reasons they do. They want this, and they want it at this degree, and it's incompatible with NPR. They don't make that first. Or they, they start sliding away from it. I try to get across, we've seen people go down, and the reasons they go down, and some of them, even to me, were a surprise. A surprise that they let that take them down instead of just soldiering through it and seeing what God had for them when they lost whatever it is they lost family members overboard spiritually but if I have one that hasn't done it and I do and more than one then that's my 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 uh, they're, they're my proof you're my proof you're my evidence you didn't let some relationship supersede what you did, what you were supposed to be doing, the intake of doctrine. All right, uh, the earth will be removed. We read the verses in 2 Peter, and, 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 and it's true for the church age throughout it, uh, this these people who mock the word of God. And, and, and they do it from different forums, academia, whatever. They mock it. And in this section, it is the creation that is featured as one of the things they mock. The biblical account of creation, excuse me. And mocking can be very sophisticated, and all this, uh, oh, the Bible, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anytime anybody's ever opened their mouth, whether it's a, some intellectual, some professor, uh, whoever, they know the Bible, they know, they know, they've heard what, these people, they've heard what's in the Bible to a certain extent. They're aware of it. Who, who, who can miss it? If you just read Genesis 1, and following, because in that account, these people will not humble themselves and take this at face value. Uh, they discount it, distort it. Yeah, but I heard that a professor of, of, of uh, biblical Hebrew in a prominent evangelical seminary, who is the professor over the Hebrew department, says, I, I know the Bible teaches a flat earth. So he's honest to that point. But I still believe the other. I don't know what's worse. This was reported to me, so it's hearsay. But you got to know, we got to know, that those evangelicals that run these seminar seminaries, these conservative Bible-believing, blah, blah, blah. In the case of this seminary, they're dispensationalists. They're not Cal uh, they may have Calvinist professors because there are Calvinists that are dispensationalists. There's all a big, big mixed bag of everything out there. You know that they've come across it. There's books written by Christians defending the true nature of our creation. The firmament dome, flat earth. I got books on it. I never was introduced to them early in my career. It wasn't timing for me. God waited late in my life to get, to get this one straight, and I'm grateful for it. I got to forget those things which are behind, which includes uh, trying to defend uh, the uh, version that we've all been raised up on. 
Again, know this first of all, we're in 2 Peter 3, if you're interested. You should be. Know this first of all, it's at the top of the list, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking. With the, completion, with the completed canon of scripture and the intensification of the angelic conflict, they're, they're coming out of the woodwork. And it's not just the guy in the street who's saying something stupid. It's people with a position, and I, uh, academically and otherwise, uh, particularly in the science crowd, following after their own lusts, saying, where is the promise of his coming? They try to discount this. You know? And they do it in a context of creation. For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all the generations, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. Well, their version of creation isn't ours. When they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago. He created the three heavens. And the angels, before the fall of angels, were all eyewitnesses. They didn't come on the scene and get created later and look at it. They got to see God put it in place. Just like we're going to get to see Earth too put in place. You're going to get to have the same kind of situation these angels had. And watch, watch Jesus Christ and his deity set the new earth up. That, that's, that's out there for you. Uh, that, that's, that, you'll have to wait through the thousand years and get on to the rapture and the trib and all that, but you, you're going to get to it. That, that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. This is the before the flood earth, the one in Genesis 1 that was tohu wabohu, and this was he raised this land mass up. And of course, water runs off of it, right? And where water runs, it cuts things and makes changes, surface changes. There's no evidence before the flood that there, that there were big mountain ranges. Not, none at all. I'm sure there were hills and some valleys, but nothing like we have now. What we have now is a result of the Noah's flood event. So flood one is in view in verse five. Through, through which, what's the antecedent of through which? Verse six, through which water, the role that water has played in the earth before the flood, getting it ready, because you had to have a land mass, because everything was submerged, under this ice pack that the Holy Spirit thawed out to a large degree is sufficient enough so that this could be raised up and all this runs off and the dry land appears. You can read all about it in Genesis. And that's where you can begin to start putting things on the dry land. Being flooded with water, uh, through which the world at that time was destroyed. The world at that time is pre-flood, was destroyed, being flooded with water, water from above and water from below. The bulk of the water was from below, but it's like, like I was illustrating with that, read about that, that rain, that, the, the, this, this rain they got, uh, they said, I don't, know how many, I don't know how many years, they said, based on their annual average rainfall, how many years it would take to make that up under their normal conditions? And they get it in hours. This, this storm off of the ocean they got hit with. <clears throat> so through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. And you can read it in the account in the early chapters of, of, of when, the flood, when, the flood, when the flood event hit after Noah had been building this ark with these three, son, the three sons for 120 years or so. And when it was completed, the floodgates of heaven were opened because there's water above the firmament. See, all this story fits 
perfectly. And you don't have to come up with some kind of an elaborate water vapor canopy and an astral visitor and, uh, that, that, that pulled the mountains up. Stupid stuff. This came out of evangelicals. This came out of a book that I had back in the day. I thought first it commended itself, but it's all crap. There's, a, there's an outfit out there called Creation Research Institute, something. And their, their main focus is, show, is to defend the Bible and show that uh, they believe in it and, and that with a special emphasis on creation. They won't have anything to do with the flat earth. Their, their pride won't let them. They've spent too many years and, and said all this, and, and they can't, they can't, they, they're not, they, they won't back off from it. They're trapped. Yes, they believe there was a universal flood that killed everybody and there was an ark and blah, blah, blah. And that the earth's topography was altered dramatically. Because you got it in Psalm 104. The valleys sunk down and the mountains rose up. In modern science, they say the mountains have inched up over, over uh, I don't know, you know. And yet the Bible says the opposite. God pulled them up. He released the water that's subterranean, and there's a, there's a lot of it on the earth still that's under the surface. The potential is there for another universal flood that will wipe everyone else, but God says, I'm not gonna destroy the earth with water this time. I'll destroy it with fire. This earth we're on, that's what we've moved on to. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire. For a day of fire, water and fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. And then I gave you, but do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. That establishes the 7,000 years of human history. Just seven, I say just, the seven, the, 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 the uh, seven thousand, seven one thousands of history from Adam to the dissolution of the present creation. Write down God's number, perfect number, seven, and multiples of it in your Bible. Now, who believes that out there? Not, I don't, I don't know. Few and far, very few and far between. Unless there's people hiding out there I don't know about. Be nice, but. Uh. The Lord is not slow about his promise. He's not dragging his feet. Yeah, I'm in a hurry to get out of here and get on with it. Because I have all this doctrine and I, I see something a lot better and I see what I'm looking at out here. The day of the, the Lord is not slow about his promise. Some people drag their feet, procrastinate with regard to things, you know, but he isn't. As some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish. He's got to get everything in place so every person has the same chance to make the salvation adjustment. Now, this, this is not a verse that says that God doesn't want it, that, that God wants everybody to be saved. This isn't a verse to document that. This is a verse to say the timing factor. He has to let all this happen so that everybody that he foreknew would get saved will have the opportunity. He can't hurry this up. That's one reason he can't hurry things up. Everyone he foreknew is going to get saved. From eternity past, he knew every member of the human race and who would, under circumstances, come to saving faith. He knew that. But if you hurried it up, some he otherwise knew would be cut off. Their opportunity would go. But for all, that's the elect. But for all to come to a change of mind. There's a bunch of people on earth today they're going to come to a change of mind. Once this rapture hits and all this stuff starts happening, their heads are going to be spinning. The, the, I, I just can't I imagine what they're going to be saying on TV and running around doing. But we won't be here. 
I don't know what, to what degree will be a form of the repercussions of all this, all these people doing a phenomenal disappearing act, leaving their personal belongings behind, out of here, <clears throat> and, and all the other stuff. It's, it is going to hit the human race. I've got a ton of bricks. Okay? In Revelation is the account. Now, uh, Revelation, excuse me, 2011. I got, uh, 2011 records uh, the removal of this earth. We saw in Peter that, it, that it's a fire factor. Fire. Divine fire. And following uh, the uh, <clears throat> then I saw a great white throne. This uh, now, I, now I want you to understand this. The people, all the unbelievers of human history have to be raised from the dead. All of them. Because if you destroy the earth, you destroy their remains, and, well, you can't do that. So logically, they have to be resurrected first. So that they, and all the rest of us, can witness the dissolution of earth one. We'll all be suspended in space, and we'll all watch this. And I saw the great white throne and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. God created the original creation out of nothing, ex nihilo. The reverse of that is to take it out of existence, eliminate it. So everybody in their resurrection body, believer and unbeliever, will see their earth they lived on in their lifetime taken out. It's gone. It's going to be noisy. It's associated with fire. And then we have the great white throne judgment. God the Father appointed his son as the judge of all men, the final judge. This great white throne, see this is all of a sudden brought into existence, and him who sat upon it from whose presence earth and heaven fled away and no place was found of them. And I saw the dead, John in his vision. John gets to see a future vision cleared down on this. I saw the dead, the great and the small, doesn't matter what your station was in life. Royalty, world ruler, or just some buddy living in a little neighborhood, a little no-name person. All the way up the ladder, they're all there. Standing before the throne, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. As I told you last time, there are two books. There's the book of the living. It's, it, it already has the name of every person from all of human history. When a person dies without being saved, their name's blotted out. They still exist, but their name is blotted out when they die. Then there's another book that has the names of all believers, the book of life. And when the last unbeliever checks out, the Gog and Magog affair, a whole bunch of names will be blotted out. The two books will match. The book of the living and the book of life, they will match. Your name is in the book of living. It, it is blotted out because you're a believer. When you, if you die, whatever, whatever happens, rapture, your name, your name stays among 
the list of the living. It's a, it's a ledger. It's, it's got to be really big. If it is a ledger like, you know, we, we are familiar with them. <clears throat> Books were open, another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. <clears throat> now, I'm still working on some of this. First of all, their works. For all these unbelievers, all the deeds they did, humanitarian, raised a family, good citizen, or and all the rest of them, <laughs> their uh, deeds are, do not add up to plus R. You're not good enough. You're not good, you aren't, all your, all your good work, self-sacrifice, everything you did that would be considered good, it doesn't add up to plus R. You can't earn your salvation through deeds. It isn't about their sins. That's already judged in Christ. That's a, that isn't an issue here. I, I suppose a lot of people, when they think of the last judgment, people are going to be tagged, oh, you did this and this and this and this. No. It's not brought up because these things have been judged in Christ. The one sin that isn't is the rejection of Christ factor, perpetuated to death, physical death. That's the teaching I've presented to you. No one is in hell for the, you know, the old, the old thing you've heard over and over again. I hope they're, I hope they're miserable in hell. Because, you know, they did this. They're, they're not in hell for doing that. Christ died for that sin. They're in hell because they lived a whole lifetime and never would humble themselves and believe in Christ. That's, that's that simple. Makes perfect sense. See, and this goes back and forth to show you that I don't care where their bodies are or their remains I don't care if they're in a neat little deal in the ground or, well, look, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Think of all the people that were swept away in Noah's flood. Right out into the water. Food for the fish or whatever. Or just decay and decom de decompose and scattered all over the place through the currents and the waves. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. This is the bodies of these people. The, the elements that make up their body, those identical elements will be raised into a counterpart to the resurrection of life, the resurrection of the unbeliever. And death, by whatever means, and Hades, that's the underworld of hell. That's where their souls are. Their souls are brought out and connected with these bodies that were raised. And they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. According to their deeds. May, when you read this, a person might think, well, well they're, 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 there's going to be degrees of suffering in hell because some people were worse than others. No. They all committed the unpardonable sin. It's called the eternal sin, the unpardonable sin, and it's also called blasphemy. Of the Holy Spirit. Why is it blasphemy? Because when a person hears the gospel and they reject it, they're calling the Holy Spirit a liar, whether they know it or not. It's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. See how we put these things together and, and this whole thing starts making sense? Oh, I've got other details I'm working on from time to time, but I, I just trust in the Lord and somehow, you know, he graces me out and gets it to me. And they were judged their deed. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. Death is physical death of the body, B-O-D-Y. Then death and Hades, their souls are taken out of hell. Well, hell's on the, under the earth. So when the earth is taken out, it's gone. That place is gone. It's a real place beneath us, the underworld of Hades. There used to be a paradise area back there, uh, but all those souls, Jesus took them all out in his, in his ascension, his first ascension. 
He went down there and made a triumphal announcement to the spirits incarcerated, the demons that were involved in the Genesis 6 episode. In other words, well, here I am live and in person. You didn't succeed. To thwart the advent of Messiah by having angelic infiltration into, into the human DNA and away we go. This is the second death, the lake of fire, which is not located on this earth. It couldn't be because it's taken out. So it's somewhere out there or wherever <laughs> in relationship to the new earth. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. That's the difference between one person and the next. You believed in Christ, your name's in the book of life. It's, it was there before you and I ever existed. It's always been there. We just came along in time, believed in Christ. Okay. All right. Uh, we will, uh, that's the great white throne judgment. Uh, the books are open. Their deeds don't add up to plus R. The other book, the book of life, your name isn't in it. You're not in the most important register of all that ever existed. And then we come to the creation of the new earth. Earth 2, the permanent one. The one that will go on forever and ever and ever. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity. May God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in Christ's name.